Hey guys, Slink here with another video. A while back I did a video about Serato Sample and how amazing it is. I seriously love that plugin and if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out. I'm making hip hop beats within seconds, it's amazing. But let's just say in that video, we were using Serato Sample the way it was intended to be used. And in this video, I plan on doing the exact opposite of that and really trying to find the limit of its capabilities as a sampler. Also, I checked the comments on that video and a lot of you wanted me to compare Ableton warp modes to Serato Sample's time stretching algorithms. So let's get started and do that first. By the way, if you wanna buy Serato Sample, you can use my discount code Slink Sample, which gives you 25% off. <laughs> nice. So here we are in Ableton, I just dragged in my song X-Ray Vision from my latest YouTube album, Alone Time. And I'm gonna use this song to run a few experiments to figure out, you know, what's the strengths and weaknesses of the Ableton complex warping algorithm versus the Serato sample uh, time stretching algorithm. And I thought the best way to do that is to just use like a really nice um, spectrum analyzer. And then that way we can see exactly what's happening. If anything is uh, going terribly wrong, then we'll be able to see it right here. And by the way, this plugin is image line wave candy. I saw AU5 using it in one of his videos and I really liked the way it looked. So I thought I'd grab it for myself. Anyways, so here's how the song sounds on its own uh, with no changes playing at original speed. So let's try doing a one quarter speed test here. I'm going to times this by two and then times it by two again. So now we're playing this song at one quarter speed and we'll set the warping algorithm to complex. And then we'll do the same in Serato sample. We'll divide the tempo by half and then divide it again. So we're playing one quarter speed in Serato sample and one quarter speed in Ableton with the warping algorithm complex. Let's try it out. Okay, one thing I'm noticing right away is the transients. They still sound pretty good with Ableton's warping algorithm. Let's see how it goes in Serato sample. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be keeping those transients as tight and there seems to be more kind of gaps and holes in the, in the spectrum here. But I will say the sub bass sounds a lot more cleaner than it does in Ableton. Let's listen to Ableton one more time. Yeah, you can really hear the punchiness of the kick compared to Serato, it's not as good. That was a really weak sounding kick. <laughs> anyway, now I wanna try playing the songs at original tempo, but pitching it down by seven semitones and we'll see who does a better job. It sounds a bit weird uh, listening to my song uh, seven, seven semitones lower than it usually is. Look at this big gap at the top. That's interesting. I guess it's shifting all the frequencies down by seven semitones and that is what you would expect doing a big pitch shift like that. But everything else seems to sound pretty good. Let's listen to Ableton now. Okay, Ableton is almost trying to make up for the fact that we're moving these frequencies down by seven semitones by creating some fill-in stuff here. It almost looks like the reflection in, in the water. It kind of fills out the sound a bit better, but I don't know if it sounds good. I guess it's really up to your kind of personal preference. Not sure who to give the win to there, but I think that's definitely something to consider. Let's try the same thing, but plus seven semitones. And we'll listen to Ableton first. Yeah, I would say that sounds pretty good to me. Um, let's see, hear it compared with Serato sample. It's really hard to say who's doing a better job here. You know, I've got to go with Serato sample this time. Serato sample is doing a very slightly better job here. So let's try one quarter speed plus seven semitones and see how that sounds really quick here. Uh, 
the harmonic content is all really clear in Serato Sample. Um, let's see how Ableton does. Again, Ableton's doing a better job with those transients, but I gotta hand it to Serato Sample for making every note very clear and, and actually harmonically pleasing, I gotta say. So it almost looks like Serato Sample is doing a better job at maintaining harmonics and notes with stretching, but it lacks in the transient department, whereas Ableton does a much better job with the transients and maybe not as good of a job with the harmonics and maintaining very nice clear notes. Let's try going even slower than this. I'm gonna play at one eighth speed. We'll go back to the original pitch here. Let's try Ableton first. Yeah, it's starting to sound like a bit of a spectrally noisy mess. Let's check out Serato Sample now. It's still a bit of a spectral noisy mess, but I would say less of a spectral noisy mess compared to Ableton. It's up to your personal preference though, I would say. Time stretching with Ableton has a maximum of this much. We can't stretch it any more than that. And by that, I mean, what we're doing is telling Ableton that the original tempo of this audio clip is 999 beats per minute. And then we are conforming that to 110 um, beats per minute. So we can turn this down to 20 and then play, and that's gonna be the most stretching that we can do with Ableton. <laughs> so you can see it's starting to struggle with those transients now and it just sounds like some weird white noisy wishy-washy nonsense that stuttery t -t 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 kind of effect that we're getting must be a product of the algorithm trying to maintain a clear transient but i think we broke it i think it's failing let's try doing an extreme amount of time stretching with serato sample now and we'll play this 110 beats per minute song at one beat per minute and we'll see how that sounds is crazy that actually sounds so interesting this could be a sound design tool the bass was so clear and all of this high frequency content sounded like some computery effect let's try playing like a bit more of a chill part of the song here and see what we get That's actually really pleasing. That's it's kind of beautiful actually. Let's listen to the same section of the song from Ableton's time stretching algorithm. Yeah, it's not as refined with these extreme time stretching examples. Okay, so we've talked about extreme time stretching examples. What about how fast can we play this song? It looks like we can play this 110 BPM song at 999 BPM. I'm kind of scared to hit play here. Whoa, that's crazy. What can we do with Ableton? How fast can we play that? It looks like, whoa my gosh. The whole song is being compressed into one minute. <laughs> Let's hear what this sounds like. It's got it, it's probably going to be really terrible. Let's see. Wow, that actually sounds like wow. It almost still sounds like the same song. Like you can kind of hear what's happening there. I think it's because Ableton's doing a better job with those transients. I want to go back to extreme time stretching with Serato sample and let's let's uh, mess around with some ideas and see if like 
we can't get something interesting happening. I have these samples here. It's just like little R&B keyboard piano type chord progressions that you're supposed to use to inspire the creation of a song. Let's try this one and we're just going to play this at <laughs> 3 BPM or something. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I thought I'd add a bunch of reverb and then this frequency shifter is um, in rig, uh, is in ring mode. It's kind of acting as like a varying rate tremolo is the idea there. Uh, let's try a different sample. Maybe this one will be a bit more interesting. That sounds a lot better. I think because the piano has like much more high content in there. I'm just gonna get my keyboard out and we'll design a quick bass line. Should we put some distortion on there? Yeah, that's pretty good. So let's kick off this Serato sample. That's nice. This one will be good because there's lots of movement happening there. Man, I was vibing. <laughs> I was vibing with that. I have a dream, guys. And that dream is to turn this Avril Lavigne sample into some kind of Godzilla <laughs> sound.
Hey, this is Avril Lavigne, and it's all about the music, the real thing. Cool. So let's drag that into Serato Sample. Let's just fill up these cue points with random cue points. And of course, we're going to time stretch this to the maximum all the way down to one. And let's turn this down to as low as it goes here. So that's what we have right now. If we select all the samples and give it like a release time. That's a little bit more uh, refined. Um, we'll turn a limiter on. I basically just want to squash the hell out of this sound. <laughs> and then we're going to use a drum bus. We're just going to crank the transients. Nice, nice. And we're going to turn up the boom as well. Now to finish off the job, a little reverb. And by a little, I mean a lot. Oh man, that's ominous. And that's how you turn Avril Lavigne into uh, a monster of some sort, if, if she wasn't already one. Pretty interesting stuff. It's got some sound design potential there for sure. I really want to have like a weird kind of sweep up. I think we might be able to pull that off with a delay, maybe after the reverb. That was cool. That was cool. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, I could play with this all day. Well, that was pretty fun. I found it really interesting how time stretching to the extremes kind of exposes this interesting harmonic spectrally kind of mess that actually sounds quite pleasing, depending on the samples that you use, of course. But it's definitely one to think about experimenting with next time you break out your Serato sample. And if you don't have Serato sample already, you can use my discount code Slink Sample to get 25% off, which is pretty rad. And thanks to Serato for sponsoring this video. Anyways, guys, I definitely had fun making this video. I hope you had fun watching it and I'll see you next time. Peace.